Hi right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. We talk a lot about the Empire and the Republic on this channel. We constantly discuss their many failures and shortcomings. These two factions clearly are very flawed and have caused tremendous damage to the galaxy and all of its inhabitants. So which faction actually does a good job? Which faction do I think is the best in the Star Wars galaxy? Well, that's pretty easy. The Chiss Ascendancy. Who are the Chiss? Well, they're basically human beings with blue skin and red eyes and bluish hair. Their eyesight was a bit better than the average human being they could see in the infrared spectrum. They also had better hearing. The Chiss were similar in size to humans, but for the most part, they were quite slim and all in very good physical shape. It was extremely rare to see an obese Chiss, and this could be due to cultural factors, but also could be due to the species' very fast metabolism. Genetic analysis has determined that the Chiss were in fact very closely related to humans. In Legends, it was said that a human sleeper ship established a colony in the vicinity of the Chiss territory almost 27,500 years before the Battle of Yavin. This is back before the invention of hyperdrives and FTL travel. This arrival in the Unknown Region could potentially predate even the Old Republic, but on an evolutionary scale, 27,500 years is quite a short time and perhaps not enough to change the pigmentation of human skin and eyes. Although it should be noted, aside from these cosmetic changes to their skin and eyes and hair, the Chiss have not really adapted to the icy surroundings of their home planets. Legends say that the Chiss home planet was originally quite tropical, but then a cataclysmic event brought about an ice age, and by 5000 BBY, their home planet had become more or less inhospitable, driving most of the survivors underground. Such extreme circumstances could have sped up the process of natural selection. Another thing that separated the humans from the Chiss was the Chiss's relatively low rate of force sensitivity. Now, because the Chiss more or less developed independent from the rest of the galaxy in the unknown region, their word for force powers was quite different. They called it the Sight. This Sight was further broken down into the third Sight, which is Precognition. This is what most Jedi and Sith warriors use to reflect blaster bolts. It's not that they have super fast reaction times, it's more that they see the bolts coming before they actually hit. Then there is the more rare second sight, which is essentially telepathy, the ability to read another person's mind. In rare instances, when a Chiss with second sight looks into the mind of another Chiss with second sight, there is the potential for a feedback loop to happen and for the two to get lost within each other's minds. Unlike with humans, the majority of Force-sensitive Chiss were female, and usually by the time a Chiss Force user reached adulthood, they lost most of their Force abilities. Now, the Chiss's relationship to the Force could just be due to some rare mutation that managed to survive after the Cataclysm destroyed most of their numbers. But because the Chiss had very few Force-sensitive members in their species, they never really developed a complicated understanding of the Force like the rest of the galaxy. As a matter of fact, it seems like a mysterious race of aliens known as the Attendants were primarily responsible for training Chiss Force users along with other alien species in the Unknown Region. Now, one of the biggest advantages and also disadvantages the Chiss had was their location. Their home planet was an icy barren wasteland hidden deep within the Unknown Region. The Unknown Region was a notoriously hard place to navigate thanks to a high concentration of gravitational anomalies such as nebulas and wandering black holes. Some scholars have pointed out that the barrier that separates the Unknown Region from the rest of the galaxy almost seems artificial in nature, as if some ancient race was capable of moving stars and black holes around to create a giant celestial wall. What resulted was an area of the galaxy that was more or less impossible to map for navigation by traditional methods. The Chiss, of course, were able to map out their own routes between their territory, but those hyperlanes were rather limited, which meant that there were only a few ways to enter Chiss territory, making defense considerably easier. This also meant that the Chiss Ascendancy was able to grow and develop its own empire without being harassed by major powers in the galaxy, like the Sith Empire, the Galactic Republic, or the Galactic Empire. Given the Chiss Ascendancy's relative small size and lack of natural resources, had they been located in other parts of the galaxies that were accessible, they most likely would have lost their independence. 
That, of course, doesn't mean that the Chiss were completely unchallenged. There were plenty of dangerous factions roaming around the unknown region. But they also suffered from the same problems that the Chiss did, which really limited their size, which also meant that they could never grow to too large of a size for the Chiss ascendancy to handle. A people's history and past hardships, or lack of hardships, helped shape their culture. The Chiss were first and foremost survivors. Their home planet, again, was inhospitable, and their isolation meant that they had to be extremely disciplined, cautious, and well-organized to survive. This meant that the Chiss were a relatively cold and serious people who embraced reason and rationale over emotions and superstition. They were also a very martial society and put great emphasis on personal development and discipline. The Chiss were smart and tactical fighters and relied on good defense and counterattacks rather than brute strength and power. The Chiss were naturally suspicious of outsiders and their trust was hard won, but once that trust was given, they made formidable and very loyal allies. As the brilliant Chiss leader Thrawn once stated, the Chiss must be approached from a position of strength and respect. One must have strength, for the Chiss will deal only with those capable of keeping their promise. One must have respect, for the Chiss must believe that those promises will be kept. Another side effect of the Chiss's harsh history and fight for survival meant that the average Chiss was more than willing to do their part for the Chiss ascendancy. There was honor in service and sacrifice. The half-human, half-Chiss jagged fell observed the following about Chiss society. You see, the Chiss are taught from the earliest days of training that it is not the person holding the position that is important, but rather the position itself. Individuals must allow themselves to be subsumed into the role society expects them to play. If you ask for someone by name, they would on principle not talk to you. If you ask for them by rank, however, they would not hesitate. The Chiss had very little tolerance or patience for those who indulged in selfish desires or pursued their own personal ambitions, especially if it ran counter to the Chiss ascendancy's major goals. Although it should be mentioned that those with exceptional skills were usually promoted by the Chiss's very meritocratic hierarchy. The Chiss ascendancy was considered a hegemonic empire. It was governed by a group of noble houses which made up the aristocrat. This was a political body that ruled over the entire Chiss territory, which spanned across several different systems and planets. The aristocrat was not only in charge of passing legislation and edicts, they were also in charge of the day-to-day -day running of the government and the entire bureaucratic structure. While this might seem antiquated and backwards when compared to a representative democracy or inefficient when compared to an autocratic system ruled by a powerful dictator, we must remember that the aristocrat were beholden to the same rules and cultural norms that the rest of the Chiss were beholden to. Most Chiss are rational and disciplined individuals and seem to have enough self-control to avoid the temptations of power. The idea of corruption and abuse of power while in service to the Chiss ascendancy was so taboo that it actually rarely happened. Instead of your normal checks and balances you might see between a legislative council and executive position, the checks and balances in the Chiss ascendancy were mainly created by the differing opinions of each family. So while the Chiss ascendancy's government structure might seem quite strange for such an advanced species, it actually performed quite well because of their cultural norms. The Aristocrat also oversaw the Chiss Defense Fleet, the main military force of the Chiss Ascendancy. The day-to-day -day operations of the CDF were managed by the Admiralty. The CDF not only protected Chiss territory, but also preemptively explored neighboring regions for resources and potential threats. The Chiss Ascendancy was well aware of the rest of the galaxy, and the CDF were its eyes and ears. It constantly monitored the larger powers in the galaxy, like the Republican Empire. The Chiss Ascendancy was well aware of the small size of their faction, and often made calculated, if not limited, alliances with other groups. The Chiss Defense Fleet's small size meant that their ship designs were of high quality and outfitted with the latest technology, including advanced stealth capabilities. The Chiss fleet also used small interdiction devices to control who could enter and exit a battlefield. This was great for isolating portions of larger fleets that would make the battle more manageable for a smaller Chiss fleet. The Chiss Ascendancy's isolation meant that it had developed many different technologies independently from the rest of the galaxy. Chiss combat armor was incredibly light and didn't look all that different from more traditional fabric uniforms, but had the ability to absorb blaster fire effectively. 
Chiss Commandos wore camouflage color shifting armor with enhanced stealth capabilities and used a special chariot gun which fired projectiles and delivered both kinetic and thermal energy. This made it far more difficult to deflect with a lightsaber. As for the individual soldier and officer, the Chiss were extremely loyal and dedicated to the cause and they had superior discipline. This of course was due to the cultural factors we were talking about before. Grand Admiral Thrawn, who later would serve in the Empire, was a terrific example of a skilled Chiss officer. He would actually go on to serve in the Galactic Empire Navy and was considered one of the best commanders in Imperial history. Of course, the Chiss Ascendancy was not without weakness, despite their superior culture and technology. The scattered hyperspace lanes of the Unknown Region meant that the Chiss fleet never developed navigational computers like the ones the rest of the galaxy used. Instead, they relied on Chiss navigators who used their third sight to avoid gravitational anomalies. These navigators were cherished by Chiss society and protected at all costs. This was again because Chiss force sensitives were extremely rare and kind of randomly popped up in the populace. This made it a huge liability for the Chiss defense fleet. The Chiss were also a relatively small faction and they had to carefully navigate around larger factions and make alliances in order to survive. Although the Chiss Ascendancy did as much as possible to put their own future in their own hands, oftentimes their future was out of their control because of the larger players in the galaxy. Chiss society was also relatively conservative. This meant that they were less eager to accept alternative viewpoints, new ideas, and generally banished or punished individuals who didn't exactly fit in their society. Thrawn, despite his obvious capabilities as an officer, oftentimes ran into problems with his superiors because he failed to follow standard protocol. Well, there you have it, guys. That is the Chiss Ascendancy, one of the best factions in Star Wars. As you can see, a lot of times size does matter. The smaller a faction, the more controllable things seem to be. Well, guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think about the Chiss, and let me know which faction you like the most or think is the best. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.